Today, I'm going to go over every single mount, what they do, why you would want to use it, and what situations you would use them in, as well as their stats, and let's go ahead and get started. The very first mount is the one that you get in the tutorial zone. You can also purchase these on the market for super cheap. I personally don't have any, so I'm showing a skin of one. It is the Novice's Mule. It has 238 HP, it moves at 40% speed, gallops at 80%, and can help you carry an additional 25 kilograms of weight, even when it's not summoned. Now, the first mount you will probably use is the Riding Horse. This is the standard Tier 3 Riding Horse. 1,004 HP, it moves at 65%. Galloping is whenever you ride for a little bit, the horse will increase its speed if you're not in combat or attacked. That takes 3 seconds and it increases your carry weight even when not summoned by 53 kilograms. Very cool. The tier 8 version has additional HP, a faster gallop, and it can carry more weight. The tier 5 armored horse has no carry weight passive bonus, however it does give you armor and magic resist when you are mounted upon it. And it has crowd control resistance, so if someone tries to stun you, or root you, or hold you down, your horse can break free slightly faster than normal. These bonuses do not apply if you are dismounted. The Tier 8 version has slightly faster gallop speed, a little bit more HP, and a very negligible amount of additional armor and crowd control resistance. Honestly, this is completely unnoticeable compared to the Tier 5 horse, and is an absolute waste of money. The Saddled Moa Bird is a very slightly faster than a basic horse. It also gallops a tiny bit faster, but it has such a low HP pull that it's not worth using. You can be very easily dismounted and killed using this thing. Never use the Saddled Moa Bird. The Swift Claw is five times cheaper than the Moa Bird, and it is only very slightly slower. It does take longer to reach a galloping speed. However, it has more HP. This is the most common mount used for gankers and just people riding around in dangerous zones for PvP. The Giant Stag is a cheaper alternative to the Swift Claw, however it is not nearly as fast, but it gallops almost twice as fast, as twice as soon rather. It's a pretty fundamental good mount. I also forgot to put on the screen, this mount gives you a passive uh, carry weight of 226 kilograms, even when it is not summoned. So yeah, if, you're, if you have my video on mute, too bad. The Tier 3 Transport Ox is a favorite among transporters and gatherers because this thing is beefy. It has a lot of HP, 1,606. It only gallops at 75% speed, so it's much slower than the other mounts shown so far. However, it has over double the armor and magic resistance of the armored horse, making it very tanky. And it also has a max load of 784 kilograms. However, you, this is not a passive bonus. This only works when it is summoned. If you have a lot of, like, materials in your inventory and your mount disappears because you're dismounted or you're, you're attacked while off your mount, you will not be able to move until you resummon the Ox, so you have to be careful. The Tier 8 Transport Ox has much more HP, more gallop move speed, it also has a significant amount of armor and magic resistance compared to its Tier 3 version, which you will notice when you are attacked, and it allows you to carry almost uh, three times as much carry weight when it is summoned. So this thing is an absolute banger for hauling very heavy stuff. The Saddled Winter Bear is a nice white chic look. It has much more HP than a Transport Ox. It is slower to gallop, but it has a significant amount of armor and magic resistance, more so than the Ox, but it also has crowd control resistance. You cannot be held down, you cannot be stunned, you cannot be crowd controlled when you have this bear on. It will just run through everything, nothing will stop the bear. The Saddled Wild Boar is great for lighter transports and gathering because it has a decent amount of HP, a fast gallop, it also has a decent amount of armor, magic resistance, crowd control resistance, and it gives you a passive carry weight of 781 kilograms, meaning that even if this thing despawns, it still helps you carry that additional weight, which is great if you're dismounted, ganked, or caught off guard. The Big Horde Ram is kind of like a transport ox or a boar, uh, but it's kind of in the middle. It has way more HP, uh, it moves faster, it's got decent armor and crowd control resistance, but it only lets you carry 985 additional kilograms. Not as much as an ox, but it is a beefier, harder to kill thing, and it's faster. Uh, now, this is not passive. If this mount has despawned, you do not gain that carry weight. 
The Swamp Salamander has 1,521 HP, and the interesting thing about lizards is that they move at the same speed all of the time. They do not gallop, they do not slow down if attacked, they always move at the same movement speed. This one moves at 100% speed. Uh, it also gives you a passive carry weight bonus of 195 kilograms, which is not much, but if you're dismounted, you will still retain that bonus carry weight. The Saddled Dire Boar has a decent amount of HP. It also has a fast gallop. It has a decent okay amount of armor and crowd control resistance, and it passively lets you carry a large amount of carry weight akin to a mid-range ox. And these things are pretty pricey, but they're also pretty damn good for what they are. The Moose is a rather large mount. However, it has 1,075 HP. It does have a two-second gallop like the Giant Stag, and it's pretty darn fast. It also lets you passively carry 374 kilograms. Not too bad. Now for the fastest mount we've shown so far, the Saddled Grey Wolf. It has a low amount of HP, 811, with a move speed of 85, but a gallop speed of 130. So it takes five seconds for this thing to gallop, and these wolves used to have a hidden passive where you can mount up on them one second faster than other animals. However, that has been, or at least is planned to be nerfed. I'm not sure when you'll be watching this video, but it should be nerfed in your timeline. All right, next up is the Dire Wolf. This one is 2% faster than the other wolf we showed. It has about 50 more HP. The only reason you would want to ride this is if you're some sort of weird min-maxer, but just riding this one time will give you an achievement. So there you go. There's your reason to, to get one. They're pretty pricey, though. The Saddled Swamp Dragon is just uh, a higher HP a uh, lizard that moves 3% faster than the other one we've shown. It's another meme amount. I wouldn't spend money on this. They're kind of expensive, but hey, 3% more move speed. And now for my favorite mount in the entire game, the Avalodian Basilisk. This thing is basically a Lamborghini of sorts. It is an extremely very expensive and ultra rare mount. This thing is anywhere from 15 to 20 million silver. All right, it's not the most expensive mount in the game, but it is it, it is very Gucci. Uh, it only drops in Avalonian raids, to my knowledge. You can, I mean, you can buy them on the market. You don't have to do the raids. But it has 1,239 HP. I love this thing. This is my this is my go-to. This is my daily driver. This is what I almost always use when I'm playing the game. It has 115% move speed at all times. It cannot be slowed down uh, when attacked because it's a lizard. It has armor and magic resistance. It gives you passive carry weight, 315 kilograms. Not too much, but it's plenty. All right, it lets me fill a whole inventory full of dungeon loot without being overburdened. It also has an ability called Power Charge, which gives you this really cool electrical effect. And if things attack you in the next six seconds, they will take damage. They will be slowed and lose attack speed for a very small amount of time. The damage is very negligible. It's just a really cool effect. But there is a reason why I also love this mount, okay? Because it is an E spell... If you are farming open world mobs using a spiked gauntlet, which is primarily the E spell, that you run around and one shot mobs with your E spell. This thing just is basically a timer of your E ability. So when this thing is ready to go, you know you can dismount and one shot a bunch of mobs. It's super, super handy. This thing lets you run through packs of mobs without being slowed down. It is my absolute go to mwah, chef's kiss, ultimate favorite, best dismount ever. It is very expensive. The Saddled Dire Bear is one of the more stronger mounts in the game. It has 3,797 armor. I'm sorry, HP. It moves at 50%, gallops at 90%, takes 4 seconds. It has 332 armor, magic resist. This is equivalent to wearing full plate tier 8 armor. Uh, it has so much crowd control resistance you cannot be pinned down ever. And it increases your max load, which means it's not passive. It This bear has to be summoned for your carry weight to be above 2,704 kilograms. It, so it, it's a, it's one of the better transport mounts in the game. It's great. Here is the Rage Claw. This is no, another sports car type of mount. These are insanely expensive. I think they're around 20 million. Ultra rare, I believe they are a raid drop as well. I forget. But it has a very high gallop speed of 127 and it has an ability that increases your move speed by 150, which stacks with your gallop speed, making this an insanely super fast maneuverable mount. Now, this does have a one minute cooldown, unfortunately, before you can use it again, but that will allow you to uh, just move faster than everything else shown so far. This is the Spring Cottontail. You can get to the rabbit during the Easter event, or you can just buy them. 
And uh, it has a very low amount of HP, but it does have a very high gallop speed, and it's a fast gallop. It also has the hop ability, which lets you jump to an area and you become immune to damage, debuffs, crowd control, of as long as you're still airborne. Once you land, you're now uh, vulnerable. But you can, you can hop, and you can hop again, and you can... It's like three little hops. It, you, you can be very in and out with this, with this thing. Uh, it, it doesn't hop you very far, unfortunately, but... It gives you three opportunities to, to dodge damage, which is more than any other mount in the game. Oh, and this mount's around 10 million, I think. Uh, sometimes it's 8 million. They're pretty expensive. And this is one of the more expensive mounts as well, the Morgana Nightmare. This thing has a very chunky amount of HP. It has a very nice gallop speed, and it has a cool ability. It's got armor, magic resistance, and the server's going down for an update. Uh, so I gotta be quick. Uh, Flaming Trail! It makes fire on the ground, which will make enemies afraid if they touch it, which allows you 3.5 seconds to dismount and attack them. It's super broken and super busted. This mount is over 20 million silver. I want to mention a few mounts that I won't be covering in this video and why. I won't be covering the Recruiter's mounts because not only are they pretty much unobtainable, they're insanely, ridiculously expensive. They're the most expensive mounts in the game. They're Anywhere from half a billion to a billion silver. Uh, War horses, I won't be covering those because those are just armored horses with a skin. I won't be covering the battle mounts because those have absolutely no use uh, to a solo player. They are only used in ZVZs, and you that's you won't be using. You can't use them in faction warfare. Uh, so they're just uh, they're also insanely expensive, and I don't have access to them. So there you go. And now for the slowest mount in the game, the Transport Mammoth. This thing only rides at 30% movement speed. It has 3,797 HP. It has some of the highest armor in the game at 428, 430 crowd control resistance. Not quite as much as the bear, but its specialty. It allows you to carry 28,101 kilograms of carry weight. This is not a passive. If you despawn this thing or get dismounted, you do not get this passive bonus. This is used to big rig, long haul, and an entire inventory of extremely heavy objects. This thing will allow you to transport things across great distances. And let me just show you, right? So here is a chest just full of 999 stacks of plants. These things are incredibly heavy, right? I can just load my mount completely full of these, naked, without a bag, without any kind of uh, assistance. And uh, look at that, I'm only 85% carry weight, and I have 8 more slots of, of items to go. I can, I can just, <laughs> like, well, I, I didn't do a full stack there, let me remove that. But yeah, look at that, my entire inventory... Uh, is, well, now it's full, and I'm only 2% overweight, which a bag or a boot would easily fix, or even a pork pie. This is the power of the Transport Mammoth, and the reason I list it as Masterpiece is because you should never buy below Masterpiece, okay? This thing is worth 173 million silver. It is a big rig. It is an 18-wheeler. This thing is for hauling goods. Here is the Divine Owl. It has 405 HP. It's cool because it flies and it's white. Uh, however, it has a terrible HP pool, 405, it has no armor, no crowd control resistance. Just regular tier 5 mobs will pop you off of this thing, okay? It is pretty fast when it gallops, I don't know why they call it a gallop when it's flying. Um, but also it has Foresight, which is a shield for 220 damage. If it is broken, you gain 35% more move speed, only for 3 seconds. So it's only 155... Wait, yeah, no, I'm sorry, 165% move speed, which is not a lot compared to the other mounts we've seen. This is a garbage mount. The Heretic Combat Mule has an okay amount of health. It It's it's okay for move speed. I mean, <laughs> it's definitely better than a mule. It has some armor, magic resist, nothing too crazy. Passive carry weight is really nice. It also has a fun ability called Boom Cannon, which makes a very annoying noise. It will knock you backwards, but also if you hit it in the enemy, it will knock them backwards and it will slow them for four and a half seconds. It, look, it sounds like this. If you ever hear that super annoying noise, it's because people in, in town love to spam it because it's such a nails on chalkboard sound. And now for one of my favorite mounts for PvP, especially in yellow zones, is the Morgana Raven. Okay, this thing has almost no HP at 405. You can kind of use this to your advantage because you can have an opponent waste a cooldown to dismount you and then you can immediately start attacking them. Uh, this thing has a 130% move speed, decent gallop time, 
It's really cool because it's a black raven, but the best thing ever is to roll up on someone gathering or killing mobs. You 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 fly up on them so damn fast, and you push E to do this this very large AOE scream. What this will do is fear them for five seconds and make them run outside of their mount's radius, despawning their mount. Most of the time, gatherers will be overweight and unable to do anything. So it's a free kill. This this is this mount is ultra cheap, only a hundred and seventy eight thousand silver. It is <laughs> it is awesome. I am surprised I don't see more of these in ganking groups, but you do occasionally see them. Also, it has a passive. If you are attacked, it will fear your attacker. So if someone uses a big burst hit, you will fear them. Uh, I'm not sure if it goes off if if it one shots the mount. I I don't remember, but it's it's such a good mount for PvP. And here's a rather boring mount. This is the Gallant Horse. Its old name used to be the Giant Horse. If In case you ever hear anyone call it a Giant Horse, this is it. It has 960 HP. It has an okay gallop speed. Uh, this is usually a favored mount among gatherers. I don't really like this one, but people tend to really like it for gathering. Uh, it has Relentless Charge, which increases your move speed by 40%. And, in, and it allows you to avoid damage and crowd control. So it is a, a small little duration there, which allows you to uh, basically run through a pack of gankers and they can't pin you down or hurt you. So that's why they like it, because it gives them that one little time to escape, but gankers usually bait that out and then kill you anyway. And here's my favorite bear mount, the Grizzly Bear. It has a very large amount of HP, huge amounts of armor and crowd control resistance. It does not gallop, unfortunately. It has just one speed. It also has the ability Intimidating Aura, which puts out this circle, which will reduce all damage taken by 70%, up to 25 enemies for 8 seconds. This thing is great in, in just faction fighting. It's great uh, for all sorts of things, like even in gank groups or just, you know, ZVZs, small, small-scale PvP. This, this bear is only a million, so it's super affordable. And it has a passive, where if, it t if something hits it, you gain 80% move speed for 4 seconds. That stacks with your 75% move speed. This is one of the faster bears if you utilize it because you can run through mobs and suddenly you, you just hit turbo boost mode. This is the pest lizard. This is a lizard mount, which means it always moves at the same speed. It has a decent amount of HP and armor, magic resistance. It gives you passive carry weight in case you get dismounted. It has the toxic cloud ability where you can cast a big AOE here. Anything in this circle will be feared for two and a half seconds, so it's really, really neat. It's kind of fun to, like, throw it on people, and then just right away, it's whatever. Now, if something or someone hits you, uh, you can emit a toxic cloud around your lizard uh, and fear someone for 2.75 seconds. Now, there's a trick to ganking with this. What you do is you aggro a ranged mob, and you have their ranged attack hit you when you're next to the target you want to gank, and as soon as you're hit, you'll emit the Toxic Cloud if you're in your ground target, and you immediately dismount and, and then you wait on your cooldowns. By the time their fear is worn off, your cooldowns are ready, so they can't just explode you. It's really, really powerful, but it's kind of, uh, it's really clutch to do. And now for the fastest mount in the game. <laughs> Damn it, Bandit Assault always interrupting my videos. The Snow Husky, this thing moves at 132% gallop speed, it is very fast, but it also has an ability called Hunting Instinct, which increases it by 90% more for 16 seconds. And now, it does, when this ends, it will make you slow, but there's a way to cancel it. I'm going to show you a few cool things with the Snow Husky. First off, the Snow Husky is the best mount in the game for annoying players. By spamming your Hunting Instinct, you will make constant howling noises, which you could torment people in town. Just spam it all day. Everyone can hear this. Now Now that I'm using it, for the next 16 seconds, I will move super fast, especially while galloping. Look at this. We are moving incredibly fast. Now, there's a way... I'm going to show you the slowness that it gives us and how to get rid of that immediately, okay? So we're about to be slowed here, and we're slowed. So we just dismount and remount, and ta-da, we are no longer slowed for that five seconds. So you can completely nullify the downside to this ability. They have never patched this in years. I don't know if they're ever going to patch it, but this essentially makes this mount faster than everything else in the entire game. And it's super affordable. It's only 440,000. The coolest thing about this mount too is that you can wear a set of items that reduces your cooldowns and you could cast the armor, the royal jacket, mount up and with all of your cooldown reduction stuff, you can basically use Hunting Instinct twice. This allows you to fast travel through the open world 
faster than everybody else. Here's the Spectral Bat. This is a really interesting and cool bat. I'm going to show you a trick with it to turn it red, which is really neat and freaks people out. But um, it is a fast gallop, which is really nice. And it has a teleport ability called Flicker. You can't teleport through objects, but for the next 0.2 seconds, you will be immune to damage. So there you go. You just kind of you just teleport forward. It's kind of it's kind of weird. So here's how to turn your bat red, which is really cool. So get a mercenary jacket with the ability Bloodlust and go ahead and cast that. And then mount up, and now you have a red bat. It's really neat. It's it'll freak people out. Pe most people don't know you can do this. It's really cool. Here is the Settled Terror Bird. Now this thing used to be the fastest mount in the game, but I believe it was nerfed. I I might be misremembering this. But I believe its ability got nerfed. Now it, it immunes your damage, but it only gives you two seconds of 100% move speed. And it looks like this. I remember that being way longer and way faster, I swear. But I again, I, I could just be, like, brain damaged. The Black Panther is one of the cooler mounts in the game because this is a black kitty cat. Uh, that's, that's the color of my cat in real life. And uh, anyway, 127% <laughs> uh, gallop speed, and it has the Predator Sprint, which is really cool. It uh, it just makes you run 150% speed for six seconds. There's no drawbacks, no downsides. It'll get you to where you need to go. It's just like a little turbo boost button. Very, very cool. Very nice. Very awesome. All right, here's the Frost Tram. Unfortunately, I don't have one. Uh, they're also 800,000 silver. I just don't have one because I normally don't play in January. Uh, so... Um, it has 1,000 HP. It lets you have passive carry weight, so if you get dismounted, you can still carry stuff. It has 120% gallop speed, and it only takes two seconds to gallop, so it's kind of like the giant stag. And it lets you leap. It lets you leap a decent amount of distance, and it makes you immune to basically everything until you land. It's kind of like the bunny, but instead of three small hops, you have one giant leap. It's And it's, that's what the skill is called. It's called leap. So yeah, it's a really nice mount. Uh, go get you one. Next up is the Spectral Bone Horse. I don't have one of these either, so I can't show it off, but 1,509 HP, 128% gallop speed, 4 seconds. It gives you passive carry weight, 247, which you can use while dismounted. It also lets you go invisible for 5 seconds. These things are anywhere from 3 to 6 million, though. It's totally not worth this horse. It's overpriced. It's, it's like a vanity horse. People just kind of show it off, but it's not very useful. Speaking of, it, this Spectral Dire Boar has the exact same ability as the horse does. It, it's the, Now, let me talk about this, the Spectral Dire Boar for just a second here. This has been my most used mount in the game when I started out. This thing is amazing for gathering, transporting, it's, it's great all around. It's super useful, it's good in just every aspect. It's fast, it's got a, an okay amount of HP, armor, crowd control resistance, it lets you carry... Passively, 1,203 kilograms, so if you're dismounted, you can still carry that weight. And the invisibility is super useful when gathering because, let's say I'm trying to chop a tree and a mob aggros me and another guy runs up and starts chopping the same tree, right? I can go invisible, and now the mob is aggroed onto the other guy chopping the tree, and then because he's being interrupted, he can't chop the tree anymore, which will now allow me to chop the tree and then win the fight over who gets the tree. So this mount has served me amazingly well in that regard. It's just one of the best all-arounders that you could possibly have. Like, this is a this is like a Toyota or a Honda, okay, as far as mounts go. And now we have the faction mounts. The faction mounts, you can use them at any time. However, you cannot use their faction-specific ability unless you are flagged up and representing that faction. I am flagged up as Bridgewatch, and this is the Bridgewatch mount, the Elite Terror Bird. It has a crappy amount of HP for a PvP mount. It does move super fast, though. It has a very short gallop time, so you can chase people. This is my favorite faction mount in the entire game for PvP, and I'll show you why. But first, the ability Q is Zig, okay? And then you can Zag afterwards. There's two of them. I didn't write it down, though. And it gives you damage immunity, so if you run through a pack of ranged mobs, you can just zig and zag, and then you won't be slowed down, and you can continue chasing your target. The faction mount abilities all do the same thing. They dismount you and leave a big circle on the ground, but for bridge watch, what it does is it increases your move speed. So my favorite thing to do with this ability, it's huge, is I will go off screen where an enemy faction player is, 
and I will dismount, and I will wait for my cooldowns, and then I will pop my boots ability combined with this run speed from the aura, and I will be able to just immediately run up to someone before they realize what's happening and then blow them up before they can react, or before they can mount up, or before they can use any kind of defensive countermeasures. And because of this, it, it, it even lets me chase down transporters, people in, in very thick ox mounts that are hard to dismount, with that ability combined with a permafrost prism, I can teleport and run very quickly at my targets and eventually whittle down and destroy their mount, letting me kill them and take their transport loot. It's my absolute favorite PvP mount in the entire game. Alright, the Elite Winter Bear. This is Fort Sterling's mount. This thing is great for transports. This thing is super cool, super tanky. This is my go-to when I'm farming PvE mobs because this thing can take an absolute beating. I don't think I put the stats up on screen. Sorry about that, I uh, forgot to put the stats up. Okay, so this thing has a huge amount of armor and magic resistance, an insane amount of crowd control resistance. It also lets you carry over 3,000 kilograms of materials. Now, that is not a passive ability. If you get dismounted, you do not gain that carry weight anymore. It also has the Winter Call, which increases your movement speed after you roar, which is really nice for a bear. Uh, it also slows enemies if they damage you. Every time they damage you, you build up a Winter Charge, and at 5 charges, you can root enemies around you. The more charges you have, the slower they become. Also, their, the Faction ability, which I can't show because I am not Fort Sterling flagged, will increase your defense by 41.176% for 15 seconds. Once you've taken damage, that buff only lasts 1.5 seconds. The Elite Wild Boar is one of my favorite things to use for gathering, transporting. This thing is great. It's got a lot of HP. It moves fast, has a decent gallop speed. It has armor, magic resistance, crowd control resistance. It has the highest carry weight passive in the game. That means if I'm dismounted and my mount goes bye-bye, I can still carry 1,808 kilograms it has the Fearless Rush ability, which charges you forward, making you immune to damage, crowd control, all that kind of fun stuff during the charge. Now, it's faction ability because it's... I'm not Limhurst, I forgot to mention. This is a Limhurst mount, the, the forest people. Uh, it heals your maximum HP uh, every second, and it ramps up up to 5% of your max HP per second after the first two seconds. If you take damage, it no longer applies. So it's just a big AOE heal. It's it's great for, like, like you have one of these in your back line, you just topped everybody off. It's super overpowered for fighting in factions. I kind of wish that Bridgewatch had something like this, but I would rather chase people down as a solo and kill them. As a solo player, I don't need to heal people anyway. It's whatever. Okay, I don't own this mount, but it is the Martlock mount, the Elite Bighorn Ram. 2,278 HP, it's got 110% gallop, it's got more armor and magic resistance than the other transports. A little bit more crowd control resistance, it lets you carry almost 2,000 max load, not quite ox levels. Um, steadfast is really confusing skill. This is your Q ability. It is a channeled ability, and while you take damage, it will increase your defense by 10% versus players, 5% versus mobs. Every time you take damage for 5 seconds, after the channel ends, you will receive a move speed buff of 15, 30, 55, 85, or 120% for 0, 1, 3, 5, and 7 stacks. The faction-specific ability makes a big AoE circle. It will increase everyone's maximum HP by 15% while they're inside the zone, and it lasts 15 seconds. Uh, so, in reality, you have about 3 to 4k HP in faction fighting with tier 8.3. I don't know what it is in tier 8.4, but you're only getting about 450 to 500 health at best from this ability. It really sucks. I, I don't see a point of owning this mount at all. I think it's garbage. The Elite Swamp Salamander, which I don't think is very good at all. It is the Thetford uh, Faction Elite Mount, 1,708 HP. Not too bad. It's got the 106% constant move speed. Uh, that is outclassed by the Avalonian Basilisk. Uh, it has... a a little bit of a carry weight passive, 395 kilograms for an elite amount, that kind of sucks. Uh, it, it sheds skin ability, the Q ability just cleanses crowd controls, debuffs, and damage over time. The W ability increases attack speed, cast speed, and damage of players for 8 seconds, so this is a very powerful ability in faction fights. Um, and unfortunately it does not work against mobs, so if you're a PvE player, you, th this mount doesn't do anything for you. And the final mount is the Elite Grey Wolf. Okay, this thing has not even a thousand HP. It does have a very fast gallop. It takes five seconds, though, to reach the gallop. It, its Q ability leaves this weird trail on a targeted enemy that's also mounted. It'll increase your move speed by three or ten percent 
if they are above or below 80% HP, and it stacks three times, I forgot to write that down, but that means you can run at 165% gallop, but uh, that's not very much. And then your uh, faction ability is, it gives you a 12% reflect, that means if someone hits you, they receive 12% of that damage back to them as magic damage. I've never seen this effect a fight, ever. <laughs> it's pretty worthless. I think it was nerfed. So yeah, that's it for the mounts. Now, there are battle mounts. These are meant mostly for guilds, okay? Uh, they're meant for Zerg versus Zerg stuff. Like, here, here's a one, a Silver Ancient Int. It basically has healing powers and some other stuff. These things are really, really expensive. They're clumsy, they're slow, they can be kind of fast, but the point is you don't use them in solo play. You can't use them in faction warfare at all. They are their own category of mount meant for big, massive Zerg versus Zerg combat. And uh, there's a lot of them to cover, and there's they don't really serve the solo, casual, everyday playstyle. Like, I used to own a bunch of them, and I would take them out for fun because they're big and clunky and weird looking. But in, in the end, they were just too much silver to hold on to. Like, they, they drop in value every year because more and more and more. Like, every time a season ends, a ton of them flood the market. It's just not worth covering. I'm sorry, guys. But anyway, I'm Swole Benji. Thanks for watching. As always, be a bro and stay swole. Videos every day. I read every single comment. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss tomorrow's video. If you want to donate, click the thanks button. It'll show up in a comment section. People can see how much you donate. It's really cool. If you want to become a channel member, click the join button down below. It's the only real source of income I've got. So click that join button. Help me out. I didn't shill you any stupid VPNs or dumb male grooming products. So help me out instead. Become a channel member. There's private personal videos that you can watch. Only if you are a channel member. It's like being subscribed on Twitch, but it's YouTube. So if you like, if you pay five bucks to a Twitch streamer, you might as well pay five bucks to me. And you can get a bonus out of it because you get private personal videos, cooler videos that I don't want to share with the public, but also game exploits, dupe methods, all that kind of cool stuff. Uh, like if you read the patch notes uh, about how the stone, if you want, if you read one of the hot fixes lately, it's um, what was it, stone? Uh, tier five through tier eight, uh, you could you could craft it the tier point two enchanted stone as point three, right? Huge glitch, huge money making opportunity. Um, it's been patched though, and uh, guess what? Day one, as soon as that patch hit, I let every channel member know. I was like, hey guys, there's a money making opportunity with this stone. Get in on this. And let me tell you, there's a lot of people that made a lot of money off of that. They made multiple millions in. Like, I think one guy made 20 million silver in, like, two hours. That's insane. That's really, really, really good for just buying 5.2 stone and, you know, uh, refining it as if it were 5.3. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. It, uh, if uh, That guy who paid for that channel membership, it paid off for him big time. So, but do it to support me. Don't do it for game exploits, okay? I just Anyway, on screen right now on the right side is a video that Google thinks you should watch. Click that video right now. Make sure you subscribe if you don't miss tomorrow's video. I'll see you later. Take care. Mwah.